Liz, Tishna, thank you, and the whole Power to the Pixel team, thank you for even just putting up, up this event and inviting me to participate. Um, my name is Sheila Andrew, and I have a company called Indie Flicks. And I'm sorry, I get so nervous in the beginning. Um, we're a very friendly, uh, filmmaker friendly company. We uh, have just over 2,000 films and uh, with worldwide rights, shorts, features, documentaries, most of them have played at film festivals. And uh, we share 70% to the filmmaker. It's non exclusive, and filmmakers <coughs> keep their rights. Uh, we deliver DVD and pay-per-view streaming from our own site as well as uh, curate and place content up on third-party platforms like iTunes, Netflix, Hulu, Babblegum. Um, anyway, uh, Liz asked me to come up with a couple of case studies and, let's see, okay, we're up there. I think what was really great was to notice that I had a hard time deciding, and I th at first I had about nine case studies that I thought were really worth talking about, when in fact I had to keep it down to two and I sort of fudged it and I'm going to throw in three. So we'll just sort of breeze through, because I think the conversation will probably be more interesting than every single detail of these three films I picked. Um, Self-distribution, otherwise known as, uh, we talked about this at uh, dinner last night about different terminology, how it can be defining and at the same time limiting. So uh, self-distribution, DIY, hybrid, Distribution and splits rights deals, I think, are kind of all the same. Uh, oops. Sorry. Of course I had to do that. So um, I think I just explained all of this here. But basically, you know, DIY distribution allows you to have full control to get your content out there. And IndieFlix allows you to do that with a little support from us as well. Uh, the internet is definitely a game changer. And uh, while we can put content up on every screen, this is what I've learned in doing this for the last couple of years, um, is that you can put your content on every screen, but it doesn't mean anyone's going to see it or that you're going to make any money off of it. Uh, I've since learned that you should have basically like a 60-40 uh, uh, rule with your films. If your budget, no matter what the budget size is, whether it's 50000 or 10000 or $10 million, I believe that 40% should go to marketing and distribution at the point of inception, and 60% should be put towards production. Um, the first film, actually the three films I picked, one is a narrative feature that had basically everything going for it, felt like a no-brainer uh, based on actual events, some stars, timely, um, and the, the second film is a uh, documentary that's very personal, and the third film is a teen comedy, sort of in the, like American Pie 4. So those are the three that we'll look at right now. April Showers is the first one. It was uh, based on actual events that happened at Columbine. We released it during the 10-year anniversary of Columbine. Uh, the writer-director is a survivor of Columbine. He was one of the three people on the cover of Time magazine. And I'll show you a quick clip. Oops, sorry.
sorry, I didn't know how to fade out. Um, so anyway, uh, filmed in 4K, like I said, there's some talent in it. We were on Oprah Radio, CNN, NBC Nightly News with Brian Williams. We had coverage in the Associated Press Wall Street Journal. You couldn't have asked for more. It was, and the timing was perfect. So you would have thought that uh, this small little independent film, which passed up on studio uh, distribution because they felt that it wasn't going to be handled responsibly, um, would be sort of a no-brainer to make money. And it's still in the works, but it hasn't been exactly what we thought it would be. I think. Being a filmmaker myself, I still definitely kind of feel like you can be that one filmmaker that breaks through and you know gets the big deal. Um, but we are doing well, and you know there's still some stuff to remain uh, to be seen. We had a couple of challenges in our distribution, which was that we got an R rating from the MPAA, and we had a whole theatrical strat release strategy that allowed for the first week's box office to go to high schools within a 10-mile radius of the, of the theaters. And the schools were encouraging students to attend for extra credit. All they had to do was bring in their ticket stub. But because of the R rating, we, that kind of went out the window. We had a lot of theaters drop out at the last minute because we were doing an iTunes release a week later. We basically were on all platforms within a month. And Hulu's going up, actually. All paid platforms. And Hulu, it'll be up on Hulu next week for School Safety Month. Um, we also had the swine flu outbreak in the US and uh, the Daytona 500 and a draft pick going on. That kind of worked against us a little bit. Um, I think I covered most of this. We've done very well in many ways. So we're still waiting to see more revenue. Um, I'm going to go on to the next one, which is the narrative documentary. How am I doing on time? You have five minutes. Okay, I can do this. Okay, so this is uh, the personal uh, narrative, I mean, the personal documentary called Searching for Angela Shelton. Angela Shelton contact, sort of looked up uh, all the women she could find named Angela Shelton and went and met all of them and filmed them. And it turned out that uh, 28 of them had been uh, abused or molested in some way. Um, and I will show you a little piece of that one. We're doing a documentary called Searching for Angela Shelton. We're going to every Angela Shelton in the country. I don't know why I'm doing this. It's, just, it's my way of surveying women in America. Is this Angie Shelton? This is Angie Shelton. I'm Angela Shelton. <laughs> We're everywhere. Most of us have been either raped, beaten, or molested. You bring your children up to think, you know, watch out for strangers and the bad guy. But like nobody, nobody says, watch out for Uncle Joe. It's not your fault. I know. That's my dad. My mother, she was actually molested by her father. I've been raised. Um, Agnon um, Delaney. And it was a guy that I was dating. He ran me. So, that's just to give you a little sample of the, the, the film and the quality. Um, <laughs> Angela Shelton was on Oprah. She was on the cover of the New York Times. She, again, had major press and support. She basically passed up uh, standard distribution as well because, uh, well, the advance was so small, she'd never pay back her investors, and she would be giving up her rights. So she decided to take it on the road and has done extremely well. Her filmmaker, her investors are seeing a return uh, as we speak. And she would never, ever give a film. She, she's making another movie, and she'd never do uh, standard distribution. So just to quickly recap, she did the festival circuit. She passed up standard distribution. And basically, she turned her film into a survivor story in itself and had the people distribute it to the people. And that was her festival strategy. Um, I'm going to move to the graduates, which is a uh, straight across commercial teen film. What up, dogs? Get in the car, Nikki. Ever since I can remember, I've been coming down here, and this place has been flooded with high school students, and they all look like they're having a good time. Gin and plastic bottles, cheaper. And I just wanted us to have a good time together before we before we go to college and never see each other again. It's a little intense, you know. 
Okay, so that's uh, a little taste of the graduates. Um, the graduates was was made for about seventy-five thousand uh, dollars earlier this year, when they were in production, or actually before they even got into production. They were really smart. They did. They really had a strategy marked out, um, laid out, which they followed to the T. Um, it has no stars in it except the son of Robin Williams. Uh, it also had a lot of press and uh, high, you know, exposure. They did a lot of uh, digital, they had a lot of digital assets that they created and shared and gave away. They also contacted the companies that they worked with, whether they were vendors or guilds, anything that they worked with. Uh, I shouldn't say guilds, they didn't do with guilds. But any, any um, group that they worked with, they gave away the sound, they asked them to give away the soundtrack to their user base. They did festival screenings um, and built up their fan base, then took it on the road to the colleges, did tours, and sold DVDs in the lobby plus on their site. Um, it's up on all platforms. And they've already made back their budget. And they've uh, paid back their uh, investors completely and they're working on the next film. So I think, uh, I think that basically does it. Maybe I'm even under my time. Thank you.